Okay, thank you everyone for your patience. Uh, we can go ahead and get the webinar started today. We want to thank you all for taking the time to attend our webinar, Introduction to TR Multi-Coax Equal Trace. We hope you'll find today's 30-minute session helpful in understanding the benefits of a multi-coax solution and your system design. We did just want to go over a bit of housekeeping. We have all attendees on mute, so please submit your questions via the questions box or to our email at info at ardenconcepts.com. Due to the short nature of today's webinar, we'll have an applications engineer follow up with you to address your questions after the close of the session if we're not able to answer them today. We've uploaded a TR multi-coax equal trace data sheet that you can download anytime from the handout section in the panel. We've also included our CA series connectors catalog and SK series socket catalog to the handout section should, we inter should you be interested in uh, any of our other Arden product solutions. And in addition, our standard TR series data sheet is, is available as well. At the conclusion of the presentation today, you'll be asked to take a short survey. This helps us gather feedback on how to improve future webinars and webinar content. And lastly, we're aware that many of you are taking time from work right now, so we will do our best to keep the session to the time allotted, that half hour time slot. So with that said, I wanted to introduce ourselves as your presenters today. My name is Nat Stevens. I'm the Director of Marketing at Arden Concepts. And I'm Alex Kenny. Uh, I started here six months ago, just uh, graduated University of Rhode Island, and I'm the Application Engineer here. So one interesting note that uh, may have changed since the last webinar you attended with us, uh, Ardent has been acquired by Amphenol. Uh, this investment by the Amphenol ICC group will allow Ardent to utilize AICC's global reach and resources, will accelerate the adoption of Ardent's industry-leading products worldwide. It helps us provide a strong foundation for continually developing the most electrically efficient connectors for our core markets, and it will supplement our existing manufacturing and production capacity and resources to allow for improved scalability. So we're very excited about this, and uh, you know, Ardent uh, uh, will continue to be led by its existing management team, and will be aligned under Amphenol ICC's mezzanine products business. So we're very excited about this, and, and it's a, a good opportunity for Ardent to grow its products and, and uh, hold in the marketplace. So those of you not familiar with, uh, with our company, Arden Concepts makes passive components designed to be as close to invisible so minimal impact and signal in next generation semiconductor and electronic systems. And we do that use, utilizing our patented solderless compliant pin technology, which we'll talk about in, uh, in future slides. Our products offer the cleanest electrical path out to 70 gigahertz, provide a solderless design, are reusable and real estate saving. They eliminate the sunk cost of traditional connectors and they eliminate the concern of taxing a user's loss budget. So we like to think of our equation as a dynamic solderless solution with minimal signal impact, which equals an ideal system solution. So we do that utilizing our patented technology, our patented contact sets. Uh, in this case, we're talking about our Spring Probe and our Connectar contact sets. Our Spring Probe contact set is a scalable solution for connectors down to a 0.4 millimeter pitch. It eliminates the barrel and plunger from a traditional pogo style uh, uh, pogo pin with less mechanical components to fail. And our patented wipe action of the coils uh, causes the contact to behave like a solid element instead of behaving like an inductor. And the result in the, is an exceptionally clean AC performance and an extremely short electrical path. Uh, our other contact set that we often talk about is our Connectar series contact sets, which are cost-effective automation loaded contact for high performance, and it's a stamp contact set for area array applications down to 0.6 millimeter pitch. As for the technology, that's something that we're going to decide for you. Um, you don't have to worry about making that decision. When you let us know more about your application, we will be the ones who give you that technology and who decide, hey, the CR or the Spring Probe is best for your application. So with respect to today's webinar, we're going to talk a little bit about our TR uh, Equal Trace connector. And this was designed for the OIF, the Optical Internetworking Forum's IC TROSA package, their Type 1 IC TROSA, which is an integrated coherent transmitter receiver optical subassembly. Uh, the technology is used elsewhere, but this is really where the foundation for our TR equal trace originated. So as integrated circuit manufacturers are continually striving to improve the performance of their chips, um, they are essentially looking to test those chips um, and improve data needs through those chips uh, to compare again and benchmark against previous generations of the chips. So 
So those designers are releasing new designs that can process more of these signals faster. And once a new chip is designed, those designers fabricate the chip and test it to see that it performs uh, compared to the design requirements originally set forth in the design criteria. Any design may have several channels that need to be characterized and tested. And in order to do that, they're typically fanning out in an existing pattern like you see on the screen here. So to test these devices, like an IC TROSA, the device is mounted to a PCB, and then the communication channels are routed to instrumentation that indicates the highest operating frequency of the chip through a range of stimulus and conditions. It's important to the designers that the PCB and routing don't degrade the performance readings of the new device. And since all passive transmission lines are parasitic and degrade signals, especially copper ones, it's desirable to keep the routing as short and the least parasitic as possible. Any added length in this trans transmission line routing is gonna show degraded performance, however subtle, of the actual device or the chip itself. It's also important that all passive routing lines exhibit the same parasitic effects as the surrounding routings. That means that all routing lines from the chip or device to the characterization equipment should be as short as possible and equal in length to each other. In an effort to keep these routed lines as short as possible and equal in length, the prior art historically has been done by routing these traces on the PCB in a circular fashion, uh, radiating, radiating out from the device. So the opposite ends of the traces are coupled to a connector, which gets the signals onto a piece of coaxial cable, which can travel out to the test equipment. The connectors, which, uh, uh, which are coupled to the traces, are generally single connectors like SMAs or SMPs, or, or singular surface or edge launch SMAs or SMKs. Uh, the problem with this approach, obviously, is that singular connectors mentioned are physically large and require a much longer trace uh, routing to the connector and also have some inherent issues with wear and tear. So TR equal trace utilizes a new interface to create a crescent-shaped connector which can be located much closer to the device under test. The closer proximity, therefore, is going to yield you a, a shorter equal length trace, uh, enhancing the measured performance of any new device which transmits or receives data. The setup is particularly useful when characterizing optical transmitters and receivers, uh, and, and as we mentioned, was designed for the OIF uh, IC TROSA package. So with TR multi-coax, you get access to uh, superior signal integrity out to 70 gigahertz, it will help you mitigate the need for cumbersome serpentine and long trace routing. It's gonna allow you a shorter trace length to reduce signal loss uh, through, your, through your system and device. Better long-term repeatability of connector performance, and we'll take a look at what that means for you. A solderless system that eliminates signal distortion for clean signal integrity. Very important here, a quick connection of multiple signals to the PCB, and it's reusable across programs for exponential cost savings. So we're having uh, this equal trace today used in applications like IC TROSAs or ROSAs, in OIF standard ICs, on optical connector breakout boards, so module or host compliance boards, customer IC evaluation boards, so uh, a chip manufacturer is looking to send out their chip for evaluation to be used for interoperability in a system, and they want to showcase the best performance of that chip. The TR equal trace is an ideal connector for that. Mobile chips, chipsets, and high-speed CERTIs. So now, <clears throat> here is a representation of our footprint. As you can see, we have three mounting holes. Now, those are very specific um, as they go along with the tooling holes that are in the corners. Now, we're not going to get into the very fine details of this footprint. What you can see here is that the 16 channels are located in that semicircle so that they all have an equal distance from the center of the connector, which would be where your package would be aligned. So now what we would do is we would run those traces in right to your package. That way there's no uh, separate loss or serpentine in it, as mentioned before. Yeah, and like with all TR connectors, we'll always provide you a footprint drawing for layout and make sure that you can lay out your boards effectively. Uh, we also, and Alex can speak to this a bit, uh, do offer optimization services for some of your higher speed devices. So anything above 20 gigahertz, you would want to, that's gonna, your signal is gonna change based upon your stack up and what materials you're routing uh, our signal through. So what we would do for you here is we do an optimization process where we take your board information and we run it through as an HFSS model and we make sure that you get the optimal performance out of your connector. 
and then we help you review your board and we help you implement those designs in your board so that you can get the best performance that you can get. So the electrical specifications, as Nat mentioned, uh, we go up to 70 gigahertz. The insertion loss we find to be great at negative 3 dB for 67 gigahertz. And we find ourselves below that 10 benchmark for our return loss at about negative 15 uh, dB to 67 gigahertz, which again, we are very impressed by and very happy with. Our standard phase matching of two picoseconds applies even with the more channels. And our impedance, as always, is 50 ohms plus or minus two. So that's something we look for in the connector. As for mechanical specifications, the pitch we find to be 3.6 millimeters. For cable, we decided to go with a little bit thicker of a cable for this connector. And we decided to match it with 086 flexible cable. Our connectors, we're capable of doing SMA, SMK, or V connectors, which is a 1.85 millimeter connector. Number of channels, 16. However, let's say you don't need those 16 channels, we can selectively populate that connector for you. So if you need four channels, that's all that, so, and that's what you want, we can absolutely give that to you. As for three thumb screws, we talked about that a little bit before in the stiffener block. Now, a stiffener block is only required if your PCB is greater than 2.36 millimeters in thickness. Anything above that, we would use a PEM nut. So, and what that would do is that would decrease the Z height off the back of your board if that's something that you were concerned about. Mechanical cycles. So, we rate our connector out to 1,000 cycles. However, with proper care and maintenance, we've seen connectors go above and beyond that. And that's something that can be looked at as effective. Yeah, and as Alex mentioned, with that OE6 cable, uh, many of you who are familiar with our standard TR series offering uh, are probably familiar with our 047 cable that we use in that, in that uh, standard product. We did elect to go with a thicker cable here, uh, mainly due to the, uh, the nature of the devices we were characterizing and understanding the higher data transfer rates and, and a requirement for lower loss. Um, so that is a, a bit of a, a deviation from our standard TR that we want you to be aware of. So what we wanted to do is run a quick comparison to just illustrate some of the, the benefits of the TR equal trace connector. And in this case, what we tried to do was a layout of a PCB uh, with the equal trace footprint compared to SMA connectors on a, on a PCB. And what we did was we did minimum spacing there for the SMA connectors. Uh, which doesn't actually even allow for a torque wrench that might be required to make those individual connections, and took a look at the area uh, surrounding what the equal trace and the SMA fan out would look like. So as you can see here, for the equal trace, we found the area to be about 2,100 millimeters squared compared to an area of about 6,100 uh, millimeters square for the SMA connector. So we're so by using the equal trace connector as opposed to SMA connector, you're saving 64 roughly 64% of your board space. So what that allows you to do is it allows you to get closer to the dot. So you decrease those traces like we talked about for better, for better signal integrity. Also, as Matt mentioned before, the quick connection of that 16 channels to the PCB is critical, especially if you're going to be testing multiple of these boards a day. You don't want to be connecting and deconnecting 16 different connectors for one board. So we also have we also find that our TR equal trace is more repeatable and reliable than these SMA connectors as they have a fine pin, which is very capable of breaking and often does. So we find that our 1,000 cycles beats their 100 to 500 cycles that they're rated for every time. Yeah, and we think that carries some value for the, uh, the repeatable uh, mechanical cycles. In this case, our interface, just like with our, our TR multi-coax, is, uh, is field replaceable. So what we wanted to look at was some of the inherent issues with, with surface mount and, and uh, field replaceable connectors, individual connectors for your board, uh, one of which is that they oftentimes require hardware, so a torque wrench or, or a, a screwdriver that you have to fumble around to find within the lab. With the TR equal trace, we're talking about just a few thumb screws that can be hand tightened with no torque spec required. These individual connectors require a large footprint. So when you're thinking about the size of the PCB that you have to lay out and trying to route those traces and minimize the trace lengths, out to, uh, out to the connectors and then out to your instrumentation. Uh, these individual connectors do require a large footprint and spacing. They're typically more expensive than surface mount connectors. And one of the things we found is you can really damage uh, these connectors upon installation. So there's no built-in compliance in that, in that center conductor pin. 
And when you go to mount them to a board, you can actually push up that center pin and damage the connectors. And obviously, when trying to characterize your device and, and send signals from your device out through these traces and out to instrumentation, you're going to run into issues if there's any type of connector wear or, 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 uh, or deformation. So beyond that, some other additional um, issues with this connector technology is plug-to-pin wear. So it's really inherent in the design of these types of connectors with an insertion life average probably of around 500 cycles. Uh, typically, with, with a higher frequency connector, you're looking at an even lower insertion life. You require those tools, which we talked about. The time to attach is, is a real issue as well. So it's longer than a push-in style connector, and we're talking about torque wrench specking 16 connections. Um, you know, that's lost time in the lab and lost time for characterizing multiple devices. And intermatability can introduce problems as well. So you may have a, uh, uh, an inexpensive, poor-quality SMA that you've laid out on your board uh, to, co to consider cost savings and you're mounting that to a high quality 2.92 connector on a VNA cable. Uh, and sometimes with that intermediability, you have some insertion loss and, and signal integrity issues as well. So we decided to do the SMA connector as we showed you before, but we also decided to do the SMP connector comparison to the TR equal trace. Now, as you can see, this one is a little bit closer in comparison. However, TR equal trace still saves you 24.4% roughly of your board space. As you can see, the S&P connector has roughly about 2,900 millimeters squared as compared to the 2,170 of the equal trace. So again, that still implies the same benefits as you had when we were testing the SMA connector. Yeah, and again, inherent with these SMPs, even though they are typically about a bit smaller and, and uh, potentially quicker to connect, uh, there are some inherent design flaws, which we think that the TR equal trace can really give you some advantages and some value uh, over. And, and with that, it's looking at those push on and snapping connectors, the pin to plug wear. So again, inherent in the design of these connectors, you're looking at a much smaller insertion life, life typically quoted out to about 100 cycles, though what we hear is that oftentimes it's much less. It's oftentimes between 20 and 50, let's say. Um, and so with higher frequencies, you're going to have lower cycle counts there for those, for those connectors. Another issue that we see is performance degradation over cycles. So the more that you mate and demate these connectors, you're going to have some inherent uh, signal integrity degradation, and that can be really detrimental when, when trying to showcase your device's speeds and, and characterize those devices uh, out to customers or, or within a system. Uh, and, and with respect to that, with the TR equal trace and with our interface technology, um, that connector technology and that interface is going to work until it fails, and when it fails, it's going to fail and open. So it's either going to work perfectly or not work at all. You're not going to see any signal degradation over time or over cycles. Jack to plug misalignment is another uh, issue to consider with these push-in snap-in style connectors. And this can really severely reduce the life cycle and performance uh, with that center conductor there. And then we've actually heard that uh, these connectors and, and some of our, our folks in the lab here will, will attest to this, that they require significant force to make these push-in style connectors. And then a full detent can cause calluses if you're doing it you know, throughout the day over and over again multiple times. So really kind of uncomfortable to work with and, and, and not ideal at all. So the TR equal trace, as you can see the picture where we compare it to the S&P connector, but what we didn't describe before in the dimensions was that we noticed that a trace length for the equal trace to the dot is about 10 millimeters shorter than the trace compared to the S&P connectors. So we wanted to quantify that data for you, what that means as far as loss. So we found that at 20 gigahertz, you're losing about half a dB. And if you bump that number up to 50 gigahertz, you're losing a full dB. Now we know that you guys are trying to get the best signal that you can possibly get for your program. So about half a dB or definitely a full dB could be the difference of why you make a decision of one over the other. Signal integrity is important and it should not be left out. Yeah, so, so Al, as Alex mentioned, you know, as you're trying to showcase your, your performance and through a system, you know, a half a dB to a full dB of loss is a big deal in your system budget. And so as you're trying to really lay out these boards and, and, uh, and characterize your devices, you know, this can have a real impact. And so by shortening those trace lengths and saving the, the distance there, as well as making those, those traces equidistant and not having to route with serpentine traces, you know, you really have an ideal solution with, with the TR equal trace. So as you can see here, this is our measured insertion loss data. So it's very linear. Um, you get a little bit of a bump around 40 gigahertz, but we feel that negative 3 dB all the way to 65 gigahertz is very good. And we 
we like our data and we like the way it's going. So this is, um, you know, just as, as a note here, the result of uh, a TR equal trace with six inches of OED6 cable and 1.85 millimeter male connectors on the end, uh, as well as the TR interface. Uh, and it was uh, obtained by applying the through-only de-embedding method with a two times fixture. So as you can see, this, this, the signal loss here is, is largely due to the, the cable itself, uh, as, as flexible cable is inherently uh, a bit lossy. Um, so the shorter cable you, have, you go with, the, uh, the less loss you'd experience within the system. Here's our return loss for the same uh, for the same connector that not just this, this just described. Six inch cable with O86 cable and 1.85 millimeter male connectors on the end. So as you can see, we stay below that negative 10 threshold of DV. Usually we're hovering around negative 15, actually, we find to be our maximum. If not even lower than that, you can see that negative 15 bump only lasts for about anywhere from 45 gigahertz to 50 gigahertz, and then the rest of it is around negative 20. So we are very impressed with this data, and we feel as though we have a very good product. So in summary, the TR multi-coax equal trace product is an OIF IC TROSA standard compliant connector uh, designed to work with the standardized form factor of the OIF IC TROSA type one. It offers superior signal integrity out to 70 gigahertz, helps users mitigate the need for cumbersome serpentine trace routing, and allows for shorter trace lengths to reduce signal loss. It offers better long-term repeatability of, of connector performance compared to surface mount uh, uh, SMAs, SMPs, um, or edge launch connectors. It's a solderless solution, which eliminates signal distortion for clean signal integrity, and offers you a quick connection of multiple signals to the PCB, and is reusable across programs. So there's no need to discard any hardware. There's no socketed, soldered piece to the PCB. It's just artwork on your PCB, and those connectors can be used across programs for cost savings. And with that, we come to the end of our presentation section of the webinar. We'll now open up the floor to a few questions, and I uh, have been compiling a list from the chat box, so I'll pick a few at random. If your question doesn't get asked in today's segment, I, I do want to note that we will have someone from Ardent, uh, an applications engineer, follow up with you directly to get an answer to your question. And with that, let's go ahead and start the question and answer segment. So let me pick here. So the first question, is the pitch signal to signal evenly spaced throughout the footprint? So the answer to that is actually no. So the pitch is not evenly spaced throughout from signal to signal. And that's due to that arc pattern. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to make the trace equal. We weren't very concerned about making the pitch even. What you're going to get out of that equal trace is like Nat said, you're not going to get any serpentining or lossy trace extensions. You're going to want that to be smooth and be as short as possible. And as I mentioned, we'll always share the connector footprint with you. Uh, that's something that we want to make sure with layout um, is a is a uh, key piece of, of fabricating your boards. So we would always like to look over that footprint as well to make sure that it's been uh, uh, tuned properly. And if and when we tune it, we will absolutely go through that board process with you and help you with the board review so that nothing gets overlooked. Excellent. So another question, in your standard TR multi-coax, the interface is field replaceable. Is that the case with TR equal trace? So the, that is also the case with TR equal trace. We also have our interface, which is field replaceable, and we find that that makes it easier for customers to, to increase the life of their TR equal trace connector. Okay, another good question here. Is there a co uh, let's see? Is there a cost for this optimization, and do you optimize the landing? So we do char we do charge a small fee for the optimization. It depends on what you are trying to optimize. If you are just optimizing a micro strip, it tends to be less expensive than if you were say optimizing a four layer strip line. Um, so the landing is optimized. Um, it mainly most of the most of the dimensions that change are on the lower layers, second layer to anywhere to the bottom of your board. Most of the top layer doesn't change, including the signal pad 
and the top layer anti pad. Most of that stays the same. Um, the main top layer dimensions that change would be your signal trace width as long as your return layer anti pad. Okay, and another one do you share the connector model uh, in HFSS if we decide to optimize in house? Absolutely. We could absolutely share that with you as well as give you uh, the material properties if you would want to make your own HFSS model. Um, that's something we have and we have ready to go. So one thing to add to that, because it's a good question, and we're, we're certainly happy to share that. Um, one thing we always like to look at is, is after that layout is done and uh, your footprint's laid out, let us please just have a look at it. We'll do that free of charge, and we want to just make sure that everything looks in order. You know, this, uh, the TR MultiCoex product uh, has been around since 2003. Uh, we've, we, you know, we're really experts in this technology. We want to make sure we can help you. Um, have a successful use case with with our with our connectors. So, uh, as always, when laying out those boards, just let us look over that footprint. Yeah, we we understand that you are in a uh, you want to get your board to fabrication as quick as possible and get it out there, and we completely understand that. But we would also we also want to make sure that you get the you get the performance that you were looking at, and the performance that you desired, not an incorrect performance because one dimension got overlooked. Uh, okay, time for a couple more questions. Um, what is the temperature rating for this connector? We intend to do some temp cycling on our device. So the temperature rating for this for this device is actually the same as our other TRs, which is negative 40 degrees Celsius to 125 degrees Celsius. Uh, we it is absolutely capable of uh, temperature cycling, and we feel that it is a good product for that, actually. Okay. Uh, and then we'll do, I think we have time for one last question. What other applications are customers using this connector for be, be, uh, beyond the IC TROSA package? That's a, that's a really good question. So obviously we tuned our footprint for a specific layout right to that IC TROSA package. However, with that said, obviously that crescent uh, shape is ideal for routing from any device really. Uh, and in this case, we are using this connector right now for host and module compliance boards for connectors like a QSFP or QSFPDD, OSFP, uh, we're using it on customer evaluation boards. So as they're trying to showcase devices, maybe it's a you know a 400G transceiver or something like that, uh, they're 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 wanting to showcase that performance, and so they put these uh, these connectors on their on their customer evalu evaluation boards that they're sending out. Uh, also for for CERTES applications and uh, and some smaller transceivers and receivers uh, that may not require as many channels, but are looking at some of that high speed stuff. And with that, uh, it looks like we've run up against our, our half hour time frame. Uh, I apologize if we didn't get to your question. As I mentioned, uh, an applications engineer will reach out to you to follow up. Uh, also, as I mentioned, at the end of uh, the close of this session, uh, it will ask you to complete a short survey. If you could please do so, that'll help us with future webinars. And with that, we wanna thank you and appreciate you taking the time to visit with us today. Uh, if you have any additional questions, please don't feel don't hesitate to reach out to us at info at ardenconcepts.com or with support uh, technical questions at support at ardenconcepts.com. Thank you for everyone for attending, and uh, we hope you have a great rest of your day.